Namaste. Hi, everybody. It's time for take two of this week's Adventure Yoga Weekly tune-up. Yesterday, we had some sound problems, and as I've said before, sound problems I'm hoping to rectify in the next few weeks through a tech upgrade. Uh, but right now, uh, this is what we've got. Hopefully, the sound is fine today. Um, it's very interesting here in Cam Duc, Vietnam right now. The power is out, at least in the neighborhood we're in. So the only sound is the birds, the people downstairs, and you might be able to hear the horns. So there's traffic around still. And I've noticed that the, the horns seem extra loud because there's no other ambient noise right now. Anyway, that's just a little aside. Today's class is, we're going to talk about doing good work. I was emailing a couple of days ago with a student, and it's a student that I talk about, that I, I'm currently in a conversation with about the, the politics that's happening in the world, which is something that I'm really passionate about and really concerned about. And I was, I was starting to to talk about how I believe it's important that we don't rely on our leaders to lead because for the most part they seem to not be leading and it's important that we lead and we do good work. It's part of the reason that Jane and I are here in Conduct right now. We are working with Rock, Paper, Scissors Children's Fund and we're doing the work that we can do. We're helping children learn about bike maintenance. Part of the Rock, Paper, Scissors Children's Fund project is to donate bicycles to girls to help them continue their education and beyond. Um, and so Jane and I have been brought in to help create a program to, to train the girls to maintain their bikes, to repair bikes. We do bike repair sessions with like 40 or 50 bikes at a time. And I'm also here teaching the kids yoga, teaching them some mindfulness practices and doing yoga with them just to help bring a little bit of joy, help bring a little bit of mental stability, I mean, you know, like calming of the fluctuations of the mind, that's what I mean by that. Um, and, and this is something that we can do. There's a lot that we can't do, but this is one way that we can give back that, that we really enjoy doing as well. And so I was talking to the student about how it's important, I believe, that we find the things that we can do to do good work. Some of you might not be able to come to where you, the charity you like works and volunteer in the community, but you all live in a community. And you can do volunteer work within your community, even if that sounds scary or kind of like something you're not really interested in. You have skills that different charities will gladly welcome, whether you are an accountant, a lawyer, a yoga teacher, a school teacher, a shop clerk, a store manager, you have skills that charities are really in need of. There are lots of other ways that you can do good work though. You can do good work by raising your children in a, to be kind, caring, compassionate, educated people. You can work with your family and your friends on a scale to help them have a more comfortable, happy, healthy life. And my best friend Chris, just yesterday, Around the time I was teaching this very lesson in take one of this class, he had his long hair cut short and he donated his hair to charity in Canada that uses the hair to make wigs for cancer patients. I posted a before and after picture of Chris on my Facebook page, on my yoga Facebook page, so you can find that there. And there's a link to the charity if you happen to be in Canada. If you're not in Canada, there are organizations all over the place that do this kind of work. You, if you see the post that I've posted, it, Chris recommends you do some research on the charity you're donating to because some of them are, like a lot of nonprofits can be, um, they are taking the hair, selling it, and donating part of the money they receive to charity. Instead, the program that Chris worked with, it takes the hair, it builds the wigs, and donates them directly to the cancer society in Canada. So good work also means like looking at the ingredients, seeing what makes up the companies that you're working with. It's one of the reasons that Jane and I are here with Rock, Paper, Scissors Children's Fund is we know the people that run the organization. We know that they're doing great work and that they're doing direct work within the community here. And that's something we really support. 
How does this relate to yoga? Well, it's an extension of yoga on the mat as yoga off the mat. But also the yoga that we do to, is, is often a, a personal practice, a really selfish practice in some ways. But that practice then becomes something that we can use to help us do more good in the world around us. When we learn to look after ourselves, when we learn to slow down and listen to ourselves, when we build strength in our body, strength in our mind, strength in our heart, then we're better able to help each other. I teach a class called A Shoulder to Lean On, which I really like because that is part of the message of that class, that we need to find strength in ourselves first before we can truly, genuinely offer that support and strength to other people. This class isn't a shoulder to lean on, though. This class is, doesn't have a fancy name, it's Stretch Your Body. Let's call it that. It's probably a good rap song I could use to, to give it a clever name, but it's just Venture Yoga Weekly Tune-Up. For the last few days, I've had a throat infection and been on antibiotics. It involved a fun trip to the local Vietnamese hospital, which is always a good time. Um, it was actually well, really well run. We took a number, saw a doctor. He prescribed me some antibiotics. We were in and out in probably about 25 minutes, which is a miracle. And the doctor's visit cost me 10,000 dong, which is about 40 US cents. That's right. You heard it. Um, so. I've been in bed most of the time for the last few days, uh, catching up on House of Cards, and thankfully Netflix works here. Um, so I've been doing some sleeping, lots of sucking on ice, which the doctor recommended, lots of watching TV and staying inside. So I really need a practice to help me stretch out my body and get myself able to stand up and not be crouched over and lying in bed anymore. Time to wake up the body, wake up my mind, get me back to on the road to help. All right, I'm going to my mat, which is just back there. Hopefully the sound will be all right. With the uh, power out, I'm expecting we'll have pretty good luck. All right, thanks for joining me. Namaste. Please sit cross-legged on your mat. Place your hands on your thighs and sit up tall. Soften your eyes. If you can breathe through your nose today, breathe through your nose. Relax your shoulders so they move down your back slightly and lengthen through your neck, lift up through the top of your head. Imagine there's a string tied to the very top, the very crown of your head, and then that string is being pulled up. Create a little more space between each vertebrae in your spine. Notice your breath. You don't have to change your breath, just notice your breath. easy today, so I'm hoping that the microphone is cutting out the wind. It's supposed to do that. Now I'd like you to bring a little more focus to your breath. Change it slightly. Make your inhale a little bit longer. Make your exhale a little bit longer. Take your mind to the bottom of your pelvis. Think about the muscles you would use to stop yourself from peeing. Tone those muscles very slightly. So not as much as you would if you had to stop the flow, but just a little bit. Draw your belly in slightly. Slightly 
engage the muscles at the side and back of your throat. Practice Ujjayi Pranayama. Tone your throat. Tone your pelvic floor. Tone your belly in. Slightly. Sit up tall. Work to have a slight sound in the back of your throat with your inhale and with your exhale. steady. Don't exhale at the beginning of the exhale and let it peter out. Keep it consistent throughout the whole exhale. And do the same with your inhale. We call this Ujjayi Pranayama. Ujjayi means victorious or uplifting. We use this breath to lift us up, bring more energy into our body, literally through the oxygen coming into our blood. We can help lift up those around us, those less fortunate than us, those who just need a helping hand. It takes some research, it takes some effort. The effect that we can have with just a small donation of our time, our money, our effort is incredible. And we can use our yoga practice to look inside, to see what inspires us, what motivates us. Really come to understand the skills we have. the muscles that you would use to stop the flow of urine. We call that tone your pelvic floor. Or mula bandha, if you know the bandha. Draw your belly in slightly. Lift it up slightly. We call that uriyana bandha, or upward rising block. Fancy it. Tone your throat. In order to have a slight sound to your breath the back of your throat. Ujjayi, Pranayama. Sing one own with me before we begin to move. With an inhale, bring your hands into Anjali Mudra in front of your heart. Let's sing one own together from the top of your inhale. Wherever you are in your breath, exhale fully and hold your breath out at the bottom of your exhale. Vajrasana, please. Bring your knees together. Sit on your heels. I'm going to turn sideways so that you can see what's happening up behind. Interlace your fingers behind your back 
Bend your elbows, shrug your shoulders. Point your elbows back behind you as you straighten your arms. That's to help turn out your arms or externally rotate your upper arms. Stretch your shoulders down, your hands up. Tendency here will be to jump your ribs forward, so instead move the front of your torso back to help bring your spine into its natural alignment, and then sit up even taller. Keep moving the front of your ribs back, shoulders down, with your hands. Don't stick your chin forward. Gently press your head back into an invisible hand. Oh, don't knock your water bottle. Feel like your hand is touching the back of your head. Push back, lift up. Same thing happens here with the front of your ribs. The front of your ribs are going to want to jut forward. Makes you feel like you're doing more, like your hands are moving away from your back more. But instead, move the front of your ribs back. Move your shoulders down, lift your hands, and sit up tall. To help sit up tall, push your feet down. your hands beside your legs, lift your hips up, come into child's pose. Bring your big toes together, touch, separate your knees wide, sit back on your heels, stretch your arms out and fold forward, balasana. Push your toes down, push your hands down, lift your elbows away from the ground if you push your hands down so much. Push forward with your hands, push down with your toes, and then that will help move your hips back and push your hips down into your solid, strong feet. Crawl your hands forward a little more so you really stretch through your shoulders and arms. your belly like you're some sort of weird human snake hybrid. Oh, that's going to give someone nightmares. <laughs> and then roll over onto your back. Come to Supta Tadasana on your back. Straighten your legs, straighten your arms, tuck your shoulders in slightly. Squeeze your legs towards each other. Push your shoulders down. Push the outer edges of your hands down. Stretch your legs. Even point your toes. Stretch your arms up towards the ceiling. Then stretch your arms overhead. Thumbs to the ground, heels down. Stretch your toes and fingers away from each other. Again, the front of your ribs will probably be lifting away from the ground here, moving more towards the ground. And stretch through your whole spine. Stretch to the sides of your ribs. Stretch to the top of your head. 
took your fingers and toes away from each other. Just to help stretch out your body. It's the rack without partners or machines helping. Stretch your arms up to the ceiling. Bring your hands down at your sides, supta tadasana. Bend your knees, roll to your right, and sit up. Sit sukhasana, or sit asana, if that's your preference. Sit up tall. Come to a bent knee, uttanasana. So skip tadasana. Place your feet on the ground. Separate your feet hip distance apart. Fold forward over your legs with your knees bent. Uttanasana, bent knee. Slide your hands beside your feet. Step your right foot back. Tuck your toes under. Come to a lunge. Bring your wrists under your shoulders. Stretch your left knee forward so your left knee is over your left ankle. So your shin is straight up and down. Stretch the top of your head forward. Stretch back through your pelvis. Push down through your right toes to straighten your right leg. Engage your right knee more to straighten your right leg. Move your shoulders away from your ears. Stretch your spine. Notice your breath. Bend your right knee. Step your right leg forward. Step your left leg back. Again, work to have your right shin straight up and down, perpendicular to the ground. So not straight up and down and on an angle, but straight up and down, ankle under your shin. Sorry, ankle under your knee. Have your wrists under your shoulders. Lengthen through the top of your head. Stretch back through your pelvis. Stretch your spine. Engage your left knee to straighten your left leg. Notice your breath. Bend your left knee, step forward. Uttanasana, bend knees. Step your right leg back, push down through your feet, Make your legs strong, lift your torso, bring your hands to your pelvis. High lunge, stretch your left knee forward. Straighten your right leg. Stay here with your hands on your hips. Look forward. Bring your hands to the ground, bend your right knee, step forward. Step your left leg back, same thing, second side. High lunge, push down through your feet, lift your torso, bring your hands to your hips. Straighten your back leg, look forward. Stretch your right knee forward, make both legs strong. Push down through the toes of your left leg, straighten your left leg, push down through your right foot, and without moving it, pull back to make your right leg more engaged. Bring your hands to the ground, Bend your left knee, step forward. Step your right leg back. Walk your right foot over, touch the inside of your, touch your left foot. It looks like right in the video, but it's really my left foot. Walk your left foot over to touch your right hand. Roll to the edge of your left foot and then slide your left hand forward. Tighten up your left glute max, your left butt cheek to help externally rotate your left hip more. Stretch your left knee out to the left. Now bring your right knee down. And then keep turning out with your right leg, but look at my foot. If you can see it, keep your ankle strong, foot flexed. Don't collapse in your foot here. If you can get your knee to the ground, shin parallel to the ground, do that. That's quite a deep hip opening, so if that's not available, 
This is when you get to point your foot. Slide your heel back towards your right hip, point your foot, and place the top of your foot, top of your shin on the ground. It's a totally different position for the pose. Wherever you are, walk your arms out, fold forward, Ekapada Rajakapatasana pray, pigeon pray. You can rest your forehead on the ground or bend your elbows. Place one hand over the other, other and make a little pillow. Rest your forehead on your hand. Whether your right toes are tucked under or your foot is flat, push down through your toes. Push down through your right knee. And draw your left knee and right knee towards each other. There will be very little movement but you will probably start to feel some muscles tighten up in your legs, in your butt, in your pelvis. Pull your right hip towards your left foot. Pull your knees slightly towards each other. Pigeon a breath. Walk your hands under your shoulders. Tuck your right toes under if your foot's flat. Push down through your hands, lift your pelvis up, lift your left knee up, right knee up, step your left foot forward, come back to the lunge. Bend your right knee, step your right foot forward. Step your left foot back. Walk your right foot over to your left hand. Same thing, other side. Roll to the edge of your right foot. Slide your right hand forward a little. Externally rotate your right hip. Turn out in your right hip. Tighten up your right butt cheek to do that. Bring your left knee to the ground. If you can keep your ankle flexed, foot flexed, and your right, if you can keep your ankle flexed and foot flexed, keep externally rotating until your right knee comes all the way down to the ground. If that's not available to you, totally cool. Just point your right foot, slide your right heel back towards your left hip. Place the top of your right foot, top of your right shin on the ground. I'm not going to do that because of a knee injury. So this is the position that's best for me. Do what's best for you. Walk your hands forward and fold forward. Again, stretch your arms straight out, forehead to the ground, or place one hand on top of the other and rest your forehead on your hand. Ekapada Rajakapatasana Prep. Pigeon Prep. This is prep. It's prep work for several poses that are much deeper, much more complicated. We're only going here too. But I want you to know that because I want you to do the good work here. Work to be strong in the pose, don't relax into the pose. Push down through your left toes, push down through your left knee. Use that to help pull your left hip towards your right heel. If your shin's parallel to the ground, then you're not gonna get, if it's parallel to the top of your mat, you're not gonna get your left hip to touch your right heel, but if you slid your right foot back, you might actually be able to get your left hip point, your ASIS, to touch your right heel. Then, push down through your right knee and left knee and draw your knees towards each other so that you externally rotate your right hip more so the muscles in your legs and pelvis get a little, little more engaged, work more for you. Pigeon prep. Bring your hands under your shoulders. Push down through your hands. Push down through your feet. Lift your right knee, left knee up. Walk your right foot back into the lunge. Bend your left knee. Step forward. Uttanasana. Place your hands on your hips, bend your knees a little, and stand up. All right, now we're a little stretched out. Let's move some. Three Surya Namaskar A's. Stretch your arms at your sides, straighten your legs, Tadasana. Inhale, stretch your arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. And exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Ardha Uttanasana, come up part way, stretch your spine long, stretch the top of your head forward, pelvis back. Place your hands flat. Step back to plank pose. 
Palakasana. Bring your shoulders over your wrists, make your wrists parallel to the top of your mat. Straighten your arms, draw your belly in, lengthen your spine. Stretch the top of your head forward, so don't drop your chin down like someone's touching the back of your head. Lift your head up slightly and lengthen your spine. Hard to do in plank pose. <laughs> Draw your belly in, bend your elbows slightly, and then point your elbows back towards the back of your mat, and lower to Chaturanga Dandasana. Keep pushing down through your index knuckle, don't let it lift. Place your pelvis down, feet flat. Bhujangasana, Cobra. Tuck your toes, Adho Mukhishwanasana. Down. Since we're doing good work for ourselves today, and that's involving stretching, Push through your hands, stretch out through your shoulders, lift up through your butt, and stretch down through your heels. Bend your knees, exhale fully, look forward, and walk forward. Uttanasana. Push down through your feet. Inhale, stand up, reach up, Urdhva Hastasana. Tadasana. Inhale, reach up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, plank pose, and lower, Chakdaranga Dandasana. Bhujangasana, inhale. Adho Mukha Shvanasana. Exhale. Exhale fully, look forward, and walk or float to the top of your mat. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Tadasana. One more Surya Namaskar. Right. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Make your way to Chaturanga. Inhale, Bhujangasana. Exhale, Adho Mukha Shonasana. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Bend your knees, look forward, float or walk. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale. Uttanasana. Root down through your legs. Inhale, reach up. Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale. Tadasana. Bring your feet together. Stretch your arms up. Bring your hands together. Stretch through your arms. Stretch through your legs. Inhale. Exhale. Curl to the right. Crazy video is mirrored, so it's going to look like I'm curling to the left, but trust me, I'm curling to the right, and you do that too. Stretch through your right side even more. The left side gets a big stretch here, so stretch the right side. Straighten your arms. Don't let your elbows bend to do your best to prevent that. With an inhale, come up, and exhale, curl to the left. Squeeze your legs together. Push down through your right foot a lot. Stretch through your left side a lot. In Dudalasana, crescent foot. Inhale to come up. Exhale, Tadasana. Inhale, stretch your arms up. Exhale, fold forward. Uttanasana. Step your right foot back. This time, Warrior Two, Viravadrasana Two. Spin your right heel down to the ground so your right foot is parallel to the back of your mat. Line your left heel up with the middle of your right arch. Stretch your left knee forward. Push down through your feet. Lift your torso up. Bring your hands to your hips. And look out of your hips. So not forward, but to facing the long edge of your mat. Push down through your right foot. Tighten up 
your left butt cheek so your left knee points forward. Stretch your left knee forward. Now stretch your arms out to your side and look forward. Virabhadrasana 2. Oh, there's a beautiful breeze right now. I hope it's not ruining the sound for you. It feels luxurious. It's usually mid 30s here, which for those of you in the strange country that uses in Fahrenheit still is like 100 plus, I believe. Turn your left palm up. Reverse your warrior. Slide your right hand down your leg. Stretch your left arm up and overhead. Push your pelvis down, stretch your left knee forward. And again, work to use your left butt cheek to help point your left knee forward. Stretch through your inner left thigh as well. Inhale, warrior two. Bend your left forearm, place your left forearm on your thigh. Turn your right palm up, stretch your right arm overhead. Extended side angle. Uttita Paripadrasana. Look up. Push with your left arm to help point your left knee forward, but also to help you turn your torso up. And stretch through your whole right side. Stretch through your right arm, side of your torso. Stretch through your right hip, right leg. Push the outer edge of your right foot down and stretch your fingertips away from it. your right hand to the ground, lift your right heel, bring your left hand to the ground, walk your left foot over a little, bend your right knee, step your right foot forward, step your left foot back, same little sequence, second side, bring your left heel to the ground, make your left foot parallel to the back of your mat, have your right heel bisect your left foot, stretch your right knee forward, push down through your feet, lift your torso, place your hands on your hips. Turn to face out of your hips. That might make your right knee turn in. Okay, we'll work on that. Tighten up your right butt cheek. Help externally rotate your right leg so that your right knee points forward. Stretch your arms out to your sides. Look forward. Virabhadrasana 2. Warrior 2. Right palm up, reverse your warrior. Slide your left hand down your leg, switch your right arm up and overhead. Curl up and back. Push your pelvis down, stretch your right knee forward. Stretch through your inner right thigh, tighten up your right butt cheek. Inhale to warrior two. Bend your right forearm, place your forearm on your thigh. Turn your left palm up, switch your left arm alongside your ear, Uttita Parjvakanasana variation. I really like this variation. There's no need to stretch down to the ground. It takes a lot of the work of your upper body and the, the lengthening of the pose out of the equation. So let's do more of that since that's our focus. Push down through your right forearm to help point your right knee forward. But also use that to give you some resistance work to turn your torso up. Stretch through your left fingertips, through your left rib cage. Stretch back and down through your left hip and through your left foot. Especially push down to the outer edge of your left foot. Stretch your left fingertips away from your left foot. Bring your left hand down to the ground. Lift your left heel, bring your right hand down to the ground. Walk your right foot over a little. Bend your left knee, step forward. Bend your knees and fold over your legs. Sit down. Stretch your legs out in front of you for Dandasana. Stretch your legs straight. Pull the flesh of your butt out and back behind you a little bit. Out. Sit on your sit bones and bring your pelvis into a more neutral position. Place your hands beside your hips, sit up tall. Move the front of your ribs back and stretch through your spine. 
because of lying in bed, and sitting in bed, reading a lot the last few days, my hip flexors are not very happy with this work today. To help with that, you can pull from the outer edges of your knees up towards the outer edges of your hips, and that'll help free that strain, that extra work on your hip flexors a little bit. It works amazingly in my body right now to stop that strain feeling happening in my hip flexors. Move your right knee, right leg out to the right a little. Bring your left leg into a seated tree pose, Rikshasana, set up for Janu Shashasana. Place your left foot high on the inside of your right leg. Touch your right fingertips, left fingertips to the ground and use that to help turn your torso to face your right leg. Stretch your arms up, straighten your right leg, draw your belly in and fold over your right leg. Hold your shin, ankle, or foot. Keep your right leg straight. Lift your spine, straighten your arms. Pull on your leg, stretch your spine longer, and then round your back and fold over your leg. If you can do it without rounding your back, do that. I only know one person who can do that. If you're watching Rocky, thanks for watching. Thanks for doing some yoga with me. Push down through your right heel and push the back of the rest of your right leg down towards the ground. Stick your butt back a little more and stretch your spine longer. John Ushershasana. your right leg, move your left foot over to the left a little, and into Baddha Konasana. Often we call this cobbler's pose. It means bound angle. Grab your feet, pull your heels towards your pelvis, and sit up tall. Again, move the front of your ribs back and stretch your spine long. Push your feet together. Tighten up your butt. Tighten up the muscles around your sacrum, the back of your pelvis to help externally rotate your legs more and stretch out through your inner thighs to stretch your knees out more. Don't push down with your knees. Stretch out through your inner thighs. Tighten up the back of your butt. Hold the front of your right ankle. Stretch your left leg out. Place your, left, your right foot on the inside of your left leg. Touch the ground outside your left leg, either side, and turn your torso to face your left leg. Stretch your arms up, straighten your left leg, draw your belly in, flex at your hip, and fold forward. Hold your left leg somewhere, keeping your left leg straight. Pull on your leg, stretch your spine longer, and fold over your left leg. Push your left heel down, push the back of your left knee, back of your upper leg down towards the ground. Pull on your leg and stretch your spine more. Janu Shirshasana, second side. Stay there for a moment longer. I'm going to come out. My right knee isn't very happy with this. Always look after yourself. Do what's right for your body. Pull on your leg, straighten your arms, lift your head and chest, and sit up. Baddha Konasana, second side. Bring the soles of your feet together. Catch your toes, sit up tall. Push your feet together. Tighten up your glute max and the deep six muscles which connect your sacrum to your pelvis roughly. They're deep muscles underneath your gluteus muscles and they're external rotators of your hip as well. They're going to help you turn your legs out more. 
stretch through your inner thighs. Stretch out through your inner thighs towards your knees. To help balance that work, to help stretch through your adductors. Do some eccentric lengthening. Tall, move the front of your ribs back, stretch your spine. Place your hands on your inner thighs, push down slightly, and lift your knees up. Stretch your legs out. Dandasana, again. Wiggle your pelvis back slightly, place your hands beside your hips, sit up tall. Not Shavasana yet, lie down on your back. Bend your knees, place your feet on the ground. Separate your feet as wide as your mat. Bring your knees together to touch. Place your right hand on your belly, left hand on your head. We do this practice so that we can learn more about ourselves, learn more about what we enjoy in the practice, learn more about what we would like to work on more in the practice. Learn about our natural strengths and weaknesses, and learn that our weaknesses can be overcome and can be turned into strengths. We do this work for the benefit of ourselves, so we can be happier, stronger, more confident. Until the right hip distance apart, set your body up for bridge pose. Satibandha Sarvangasana. Bring your heels close to your hips. Make your feet parallel to each other about hip distance apart. Straighten your spine. Bend your elbows, push down to your feet, elbows, shoulders. Lift your pelvis up. Interlace your fingers underneath your back, just like we did at the beginning. Walk your shoulders in slightly. Push down through your shoulders and your wrists. Push down through your feet. And to help lift your pelvis higher, pull back with your feet and lift your pelvis higher. Push down through your shoulders, lift your sternum away from the ground, your breastbone. It's called Pratipanda Sarvangasana in Sanskrit. It means a bridge formation in a shoulder sit. So push through your shoulders, stand on your shoulders. Pull back with your feet or lift your hips higher. We do this work of building strength and confidence in ourselves in yoga so that we can help others, not just to help ourselves, so that we can be better friends, better lovers, better parents, so that we can help our community at home and our community at large. But it does start with you. Release your hands, lower your pelvis. We need to look after ourselves before we're really able to give back to help. And it starts here on your mat. Stretch your legs straight and the Sutta Tavasana. Flex your feet, straighten your arms, push your shoulders down, squeeze your legs towards each other and stretch your spine. Move the front of your ribs down towards the mat slightly. Stretch through your spine. Sutta Tadasana. One more Satipanda Sarvangasana. Bend your knees, place your feet on the ground. Make your feet parallel to each other, hip distance apart, bend your elbows. Push down through your feet, lift your pelvis up. Change the clasp of your hands and interlace your hands underneath you. Tuck your shoulders in a bit. Push down through your shoulders, push down through your hands. Push down through your feet and pull back with your feet to lift your pelvis up even more. Push down through your shoulders, lift your sternum away from the ground. Breathe, stretch through the front of your body. Hands, lower your pelvis. 
seated position, bring your hands under your navel. Sit up tall and close your eyes. Thanks for doing good work for yourself today. Stretching your mind, stretching your body, stretching your heart. We practice yoga and we learn that we're capable of more than we thought we were. We learn that we can do good work for ourselves, and then share our experiences, share our skills, share our knowledge with our friends, with our family, with people we hardly even know. It's up to us. We're the leaders. We need to lead. Thanks for practicing. So nice to have you here. Namaste. So, Jane has asked me let you know that oh, people might be interested to know where we are, to know where these classes are taking place. So let's see if I can turn the camera around. I can. And you can see a little bit of Kamduk, which is the town we're in here in Vietnam. This is the rooftop of the hotel. This is, was once a karaoke center and is now where I get to teach yoga, which is pretty awesome. You can see some of these next door neighbors. They've got tin roofs rusted. Yep, got a song going through my head all the time here. There's some coconut trees in the background. Mango trees are in abundance here. This massive tree in front of me here is a mango tree. And it's a really beautiful yard we've got for the hotel. It's got plants everywhere. There are more mango trees over here. This other, these two trees right in front of you on the other side of the street are mango trees. Not everything's that exotic. Bougainvillea, just like you might find in LA or lots of parts of America. And you can look out over the street. This is the street we live on. Not much going on right now. It's the middle of the day. People are at work. It's fairly quiet with the power off. It's quite nice enjoying it. Anyway, that's us in Kamduk. Thanks for joining me and I will see you soon. We'll do another class next week. I think by Wednesday, Jane and I will either be in Ho Chi Minh City or we'll be in Kuala Lumpur. So I'll be doing class from one of those cities. All right, see you soon. Thanks for watching. Namaste.